Hi folks, Emily here. Talk about lupins. We've had a lot of questions recently about how to identify our native lupin compared to the much more common invasive western lupin that we have all throughout the state here. I'm in a field right now of the western lupin. This is Lupinus polyphilus. Um, it is a non-native invasive species in the state, so it's very common um, and easily confused with our native that might actually be extirpated from the state. So it, it probably does not grow here much in the wild. There might be some secret spots still, but um, I'm going to talk about how to identify them. So the first thing that you can look at is habitat. So Lupinus polyphilus likes richer soils, wetter soils. Um, and the Perinus, our native sundial lupin, likes dry, sandy, sunny soils. It's also a good rule of thumb that if you see anything growing like this in these mass fields, it's probably an invasive species, which means it's out-competing native species and native plants that could be using this area. Um, these non-native plants don't support the wildlife that our natives support. Um, specifically, there's an endangered butterfly that uses um, our native plant and cannot use this, and that is part of why that insect is endangered. Um, so first, one of the best ways to identify is habitat, check. The next is to look at the flowers. The flowers are a lot deeper blue most of the time. They also come in these pinks every now and then. Um, they've been used for hybridizing uh, lupins all throughout the horticultural world. So you'll see a lot of variation in the color. Um, the, the raceans, these are the flower stalks, are also much longer than the native species and tend to be a little denser. But the best tried and true method is to look at the leaves. I'm gonna pick one here. Um, so they have these like kind of palmate leaves and each of these little leaves is called a leaflet. Um, so what you can do is you can count them. And the non-native Lupinus polyphilus lupin, the western lupin, will have way more than the native one. So it's gonna have 11 to 17 leaflets. So we can count these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it's got a bunch of them. And I encourage you to check several around when you're, when you're looking. Um, and you'll probably get that whole gambit of 11 to 17, sometimes even more. Um, the native lupin will only have like five to sometimes 11. So there can be a little bit of overlap, but it's never gonna have more than 11 leaflets uh, per leaf. Um, so that's the best way to tell. They also tend to be much longer. So these guys can get several inches long and usually the native is only a couple inches long. Um, but the best way to, to tell is to count those leaflets and look around yourself and kind of make that educated guess about this is probably the non-native if it's growing like this in a field like this. All right, and here we are at one of our wonderful volunteers' house to talk about the native lupin. So this is our sundial lupin. This is Lupinus perinus. Um, and you can see right off the bat, I am not swimming in it. It's not up to my, uh, above my hips. Um, these flowers are shorter and quite uh, lighter blue, more of a light blue. And then if you look at the, the leaflets here, they're gonna have between five and 11 leaflets. This one, if we count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, we can do a few of them, but they're never gonna have more than 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so it's always going to be between 5 and 11 leaflets. Um, and shorter spires on the, the racines, shorter flower spikes, um, lighter blue. It's kind of a, a smaller plant and you're not going to see massive masses of them. These were planted, this is a little example pine barren type garden. Um, they really like sandy soils and suns and that's really the only place they're going to survive is in conditions like that. So those are really the big things you need to know about sundial lupin, our wonderful native lupin, host plant to the Kerner blue butterfly, and several other things, and wonderful pollinator plant.